Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and welcome back to another Arma Free Eden Editor tutorial video. And today we will be covering recording flight paths for helicopters and, and jets, basically. Once you figure out how to do that, you can do really, really cool stuff like this. I think that's pretty much the clearest example of the really cool shit that you can do with recording flight paths. But it takes a little bit of setting up. And so to show that, I'm going to go onto the Bohemia forums because I found an excellent post there. And I'm going to use that one to explain it to you. And I'm going to show you it step by step as we try to work out the way it exactly works. All right. So first things first, of course, I uh, plop down my, my uh, own character. I plopped down a helicopter and I named it helicopter or heli one. That is its variable name. It is unique, of course. So this is how the game will recognize this helicopter for all time. And uh, we're going to call on this in the script later on. So let's jump into the mission folder, shall we? All right, so we're in the mission folder. And first thing that we need to do is we need to create a custom file or a custom.sqf file. Now, I've done this before in my previous videos, but I'm going to do it again for the people that are new to this. So I'm going to go to Windows and I'm going to use a, 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 a program called Klopplock. That's Dutch, but in English it will be called Notepad. All right, so I'm going to open this up. And um, in this, I'm going to cover, uh, copy and paste something from the forums. So I have the, the website open here. Props to Matt Cheese for writing this down because it is very, very useful. And we are going to be copying and pasting this little area up here. All right. So let's copy this and uh, let's uh, paste that down into our file. And then we're going to want to change some things, but I'll explain that to you uh, looking at the posts on the forum. All right. So. We have several things that we need to check out here. We have movement data, and this is the recording. Like when we record the flight path, we will have to copy that information into this little area. And this will give basically a very, very long list of coordinates of where the helicopter flew up along, basically. And the same thing is true for the firing data, except this records when and where rockets and, and bullet fire basically went to. The only exception to this is that you can only record unguided uh, missiles and projectiles, basically. So guided missiles cannot be recorded. You have to fire everything by hand and you have to make sure that you hit it yourself without the use of guided missiles. All right, then we have some more uh, interesting stuff. We have sequence, vehicle name, movement data, spawn, bis, funk, unit play, or if this is for function. And all we need to do here is we need to change the vehicle name into the vehicle that we are actually using, which is Heli 1. And then we can leave that be. And then let's see, vehicle name, firing data is basically the same thing, except for, of course, the firing data. And then it's wait until the script is done. And then at the end, we will play a hint, which says playback finished. But we don't need this in the end anymore either. So what we need to do is we are going to change vehicle name over here. We're going to call that one Heli 1. Same thing for this one over here, heli1. Uh, we're going to remove the hint. And we are also going to remove these two uh, backslashes, as well as the these two backslashes up here. All right. And that is all we really need to do for now. And the reason that we need to remove these backslashes is because, uh, as the forum post explains really well, is, um, well, the firing data will not work if you keep the backslashes in there. So. The backslashes can stay there if all you need to record is a, is like a troop transport. But if you want a helicopter that can fire at stuff, then you need to remove those slashes. Otherwise, the game will not be able to read the firing data. All right. All right. So let's save this file. Let's see. Save as. Uh, this will be saved towards the uh, uh, desktop, basically. But uh, we need to be on all files, or alle bestanden in Dutch, but in English this will be all files. Not text, but all files. It's very important, because if you leave it at text, it will not turn into an SQF. Alright? So, we need a name. So let's see, uh, flight path one dot SQF. And this is very important. You need to type dot SQF at the end there, and then we need to save it. 
All right. So let's jump into my desktop and uh, let's get rid of all of this. All right. I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I need to cut this and I'm going to paste that into my mission folder. All right. That is all we need for now. Let's go back to the forum post and have a look at what else is there. All right. So we need several things. We will also need to use a, not another command inside of the game itself, and that is the actual record command. And uh, let's see, it is rec equals vehicle player 220 uh, spawn bis function unit capture. And that means that this command will record the movement of the player's vehicle for 200 seconds, which is this part right here, with a frame rate of 20 frames per second, which is the 20 over here. You can move that up to 60 or 30 or whatever you want, All right? Um, yeah, he is assuming that you want to control the vehicle, and we definitely do want that. Um, if you also want to record firing information for the vehicle, remove the backslashes, as I told you as well. Remove those from the script and add true to the command in the radio trigger. So the one that we're going to use is this one right here, because this one has a well the vehicle of the player that's being recorded to for 200 seconds at 20 frames per second and then true for weapon fire recording okay that is not, this one is the thing that you would use for troop transport but if you want to have like a fire mission or you know a helicopter spraying gunfire into a tree line something like that you are going to require this little script over here All right so i'm going to be copying this and then i'm going to jump back into the game all right, so I'll see you there, or I will see you there. All right, so we're back into the game, and the first thing we need to do now is we need to create a custom trigger. So let's go over to triggers, and I'm going to use one without the radius, and I'm going to place it down like this. I'm going to be calling it uh, Heli Radio, or uh, no space, and I'm going to give it a name as well. And I'm going to, or <laughs> not a name, but I'm going to give it a text so it shows up in the radio system later on. So record flight path, right? On activation, we are going to say radio alpha. And then in condition, it will stay as this. And then on activation, we are going to paste what we copied on the forums earlier. So record equals vehicle player for 200 seconds at 20 frames per second. And I'm going to want to change this to 30, I think. I think the human eye sees helicopter or uh, sees movement the best at 30 frames per second, or that's like the minimum that you need to see something fly smoothly. And otherwise, with 20, it will like look kind of um, I don't know, kind of uh, stuttery, I suppose. All right, so that's all we need right now. And um, what we are going to want to do is we are going to want to play as the helicopter. So we can go right click on the helicopter and then do play as the character. All right, so we're back into the game and it's time to start recording our flight path. And the way we do that is we open up the radio menu by pressing zero two times and then press one to reco start recording the flight path as you can see in the bottom left or in the top left. So let's start that and then let's start flying the plane or the, air <laughs> the helicopter, I mean. And as you can see in the top right, it says starting capture including weapon fire data, which is exactly what we want. Now, I'm a terrible pilot, but I'm just going to fly around a little bit and I'm going to fire off our weapons as well. So we can record that information. I mean, I can keep the helicopter up in the air, that's not really the problem. The problem for me has always been actually hitting my targets once I'm flying. And that's probably because I have no understanding of the actual flight mechanics at work. <laughs> and also I have no patience to actually figure that stuff out, because I'm an infantryman at heart. But uh, learning how to do this kind of stuff is always really cool for mission effects. Alright, that's going to be enough. So, I'm going to press escape now, and I'm going to press escape again to go back in game, and then we will see the flight path information, or ac actually the prompt to, to copy it. So, let's go back in game then, and as you can see at the right hand side it says capturing completed, press F1 to copy movement data to clipboard and press F2 to copy weapon fire data to clipboard. 
It also shows you all the total captured frames, the total capture time, average captured FPS, average sleep time between frames, and the input FPS, and the input sleep from FPS. Right. One thing that's really important here is that you do not want to press F1 and then press F2 straight away. You definitely do not want to do that because one will overrule the other. What you want to do is you want to press F1 first, then go back out of the game and into your mission folder. Alright, so let's go and do that now. Let's press F1. As you can see, it says units movement data copied to clipboard. So, let's go back into our mission folder. Alright, so we're in the mission folder again and let's open up flight path 1. Right. First thing I want to do is I want, I'm going to want to have a little bit of space in between movement data and firing data over here. And then I'm going to select all of this, including the little uh, icons at the ends here. Or actually, let's remove this little space at the end as well, because it's kind of bugging me. Same over there. And let's select this, all of this, and then paste the information that we need. And as you can see, it is an absolutely massive, massive wall of text. Right, and that is kind of why I wanted to have the little space in between, because as you can see, uh, firing data is now down here and it's easily identifiable. If it was straight up here and then after that you copy the firing data into it, it is going to be very confusing. But first things first, let's uh, save this and then jump back into the game to record the firing data. Alright, back into the game, let's press F2. Now it says units weapon fire data, copy to clipboard. That's exactly what we need, so let's jump back into the mission folder again. Alright, so we're back. Let's go back to the flightpath1.sqf. And then let's select this bit, bit of code over here, including the little signs that I don't know the name for. And let's paste the firing information as well. There we go. This one is a lot shorter. And it shows that, um, it basically shows exactly when, uh, at what time these weapons were fired basically and what weapon was fired and like I said um, it's really important only unprojected or un unguided missiles and projectiles can be recorded so only the minigun and the rockets basically but none of the guided missiles all right very important to remember all right so let's save this stuff once again and go back into the game all right back into the game once more Let's create another custom trigger, right? Another one without radius, and this one for the for the purposes of uh, the tutorial, I will make this a radio trigger as well. But you can make this whatever kind of trigger you really want and or need for your specific mission, right? I'm going to give this the name Radio Two because why not? And in text, execute flight path, All right? So uh, activation is going to be Radio Bravo. Condition is going to be this, and then on activation, we're going to paste this little bit of info or this little bit of code, and of course, we're going to change the name to Flight Path One, right? And add a little semicolon at the end as well, and then let's check it out. All right, so back in game, let's open up the radio menu and uh, press Execute Flight Path. As you can see, I'm probably still talking at this point. The helicopter did judder a little bit and it should start flying soon. I hope. Yep, there we go. <laughs> For some reason, the helicopter isn't actually starting. What the hell is going on? But it is following my path exactly, and it is firing all the weapons at the same time as I was firing them as well. So it actually does work. For some reason the engine is not switched on, which is very weird. And um, we're going to have that fixed. Let me check that out. Alright, so I made it work. I don't, I'm not entirely sure why the engine doesn't turn on by itself. Uh, maybe it's because I messed with the frame rate. So if you're still watching this video at this point, probably leave the frame rate at 20 and see if it works for you. But if it doesn't, um, I made a little fix for myself. And in the radio path over here, I uh, add a little bit of code that says Heli 1 engine on true. And that means that at the same time when the flight path starts being executed, the helicopter engine will turn on by itself as well. 
So, let's see how that looks in game, shall we? Alright, so, X is a good flight path. There we go. Engine starts to turn on. And it's actually, it, it, it revs up the way it should as well, by the way, because as you can see, like, the engine starts to go on at the time I started my recording as well, which is, uh, you know, I didn't turn on my engine before I started recording either. And now it looks good. As you can see, now the engine is on. It's still firing when it should, and firing the rockets everywhere it should, because that's exactly where I fired my rockets. We should make my terrible turnaround over there in just a second. And then we should come flying back this way. I think, right? Almost overhead, probably. There we go. So that's the ending of the recording right there. Now the helicopter is just going to hover around for a bit because it doesn't have a waypoint and doesn't have anywhere to go. And that's another important thing. At the end of a strafing run like this, what you probably want to do is either delete the vehicle entirely or you're just going to want to fly it out of view where you know that the player is never going to see the helicopter again. Right? Um, let me just show you that code as well. It's very simple actually. If you want to delete or if you want to delete the vehicle, it's pretty simple. I'll make a little trigger over here. Um, let's uh, make this radio Charlie. Uh, radio free delete. And then uh, let's see yeah radio Charlie condition this on activation LD1 delete vehicle or um delete vehicle how they want that should work right so radio delete and again and away goes the helicopter of course its crew stays behind so that's something you're going to have to deal with as well anyway that's it for this episode please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and want to see more and i'll see you guys for whatever video i do next Sick mind, right? <laughs>